Hello there. Hello everyone and welcome back to Jedi Knights. I'm your host Christian Buckley joined by my co-host Mike Connors. How's it going everybody? Thanks for having me. Mike it's good to have you here you know uh still in quarantine still the world is changing every second right now. It really is. Mm -hmm. Uh things are things are you know changing by the day. Yeah so um to kick the show off this week, before we get into being dumb people just talking about space wizard movies for kids. Which we will get. We'll get to that, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we've had conversations on the show before about toxicity in the Star Wars community, right? And just how, like, horrible some people on the internet and in real life can be when it comes to Star Wars, either the community itself or actors people who worked on the shows films some people some people are just real jerks yeah um so i think i speak for both of us when we say that uh black lives matter everything that is going on right now is incredibly important we shouldn't be looking away from it it's um, very true and if you get angry by that statement then we don't want you listening to the show <laughs> yeah seriously if you you know, if you are prejudiced against people who look different than you, then you can, like, the back button's probably somewhere up here. Yeah. You just press that. We can, the best we can do, you know, is just to, like, elevate the people that know what it's like and True. use our show, because we have listeners, use our show <laughs> to just be, like, saying how it is, you know? Like, fuck racism, fuck the people that want to hate it's bigger than star wars sometimes it's certain this is certainly bigger than star wars this is bigger than all of us yeah yeah an injustice against one of us is mm -hmm. an injustice against injustice against all of us right yeah so so uh it did not feel right to go straight into the show this week without addressing that and you know just giving support to the movement and the people because it's it's the right thing to do it is very much so black lives matter absolutely so now that the good people are listening to the show <laughs> <laughs> um we do have some really coming out swinging with that one <laughs> uh now that we uh we do have some star wars news to talk about it's a very light news week all things considered uh there was going to be supposedly a new EA Star Wars game that was going to get revealed this week. Odds are, got moved to next week. Ugh. Yeah. Um, the rumor is it's Project Maverick, which is being allegedly worked on by EA Motive, who helped with Battlefront 2. Um, I believe they worked on Need for Speed in the past, or another EA racing game. I have no idea. Well, I can fact check that, but uh, Jason Schreier, Jeff Grubb, both had been alluding to the fact that uh, EA Motive, who recently made a Twitter account, would be announcing on June 2nd a, uh, a new Star Wars game, which is basically a 2020 version of Rogue Squadron. Um, Mike, you and I were talking a little bit this, about this before the show. If this is what's happening, if this is what's getting announced sometime in the next few weeks... Sure. Um, what is your biggest hope from it you know because like we have the x-wing battles in battlefront 2 motive had worked on that do you think a standalone game should be radically different in the way it controls would you want to see a story element there where's your head oh i would definitely want to see a story element mm -hmm. that's for sure i mean i think that's one of the biggest things that i dislike to get about the first battlefront is that there was really like nothing there other than its multiplayer yeah uh so yeah i would definitely want to see it get into some sort of story um honestly i like the way that i kind of like the way that like ships feel like control wise in battlefront 2 mm -hmm. uh but yeah i don't really have much hope for for anything really in that realm okay yeah because i think um motive or not motive the uh movement in battlefront 2 for ships it's like it's the same across battlefront 1 and 2 and once you really get into it i feel like it makes sense you know like yeah. left stick is for, or 
at least on console left stick is for throttle uh right is for your pitch and stuff like that um so i i think adapting that or really just using that as the foundation for a full game would be great if they yeah. want to make it more arcadey like the comparison to excuse me to rogue squadron back in the day i think that could be cool too you know really yeah try to diversify the types of star wars games that we're getting because i don't think everything needs to be super hardcore pushing tech yeah um, no it doesn't <laughs> like jedi fallen order was not that at all and it was one of my favorite games of last year so i, I think there's room for arcadiness if they don't want to go the sim route yeah i mean i think that's fine I, i'm just excited to see really any new star wars video game like here's the thing like there there are a lot of like old star wars video games Mm -hmm. and like not all of them are good but some of them are like super good and i think it's super hard to nail a star wars video game because there's a lot of like elements of like nostalgia that you have to hit but also like new and it's really difficult to do Mm -hmm. that in like a like a unique game um but sometimes you know people nail it we saw that recently yeah (laughs) um but the key is to just like do as many as you can you know Mm -hmm. and like we need you need to just do more star wars games and the and the likelihood that a good star wars Wars game is going to have is going to come out of it is really high yeah and this is definitely a step in that direction like when (coughs) earlier this year um jason schreier reported on the (coughs) canceled star wars game that we didn't know got even existed right there was like another one they just canceled it was going to be a standalone battlefront type single player story right um he said that project maverick which again we learned about i think in february or march is a really weird small scale side thing to just get out there so we have a constant stream of star wars games so ea looking to the success of fallen order and maybe if this game is a success we'll just keep going down that path of like hey it's more small scale like maybe 10 hour campaign star wars games reuse some assets every couple of year or every year and then we get our big huge fallen order or battlefront every couple of years uh it could be honestly it would be better than the past decade of star wars games <laughs> yeah it would be i mean the past decade of Star Wars games was just like so far, uh, few and far between. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, like Star Wars is just like a really cool IP to 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 make into video games, and I think they need to just do it way more. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I hope I don't know like what the deal is with with Disney and like EA's contract with one another. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's been extended. I thought that it expired like soon or like it already should have been should have expired Um, so funny about that um i think last spring i want to say um because i think this was around the time of endgame there was a disney investors meeting with bob Iger, and he was talking about different properties uh disney plus series for marvel and star wars uh, before that got his big blowout and somebody asked him about marvel games and then the follow-up i believe was about star wars games and the partnership with ea and Iger basically was like you know we're really happy with the way the partnership has worked for star wars games uh with ea we don't have any complaints <laughs> so i think even if it is expiring soon based on that and that was before Fallen Order even came out and was a giant success. I think they're probably going to resign. I mean, you know, EA really proved me proved me wrong, like with Fallen Order and then with Battlefront Two. Uh-huh. So, like, I have faith in the fact that they that they'll be able to like produce some like good games coming out of the uh, yeah and. We're actually going to get to Battlefront 2 later in the episode. Um, yep. Because uh, it is now free on PlayStation Plus. But, yeah, yes. I think I think EA... I'm hopeful, you know? Like, they gave me a seed of hope with Fallen Order. Um, 
they're also finally apparently gonna start doing remasters for more than just burnout paradise so um completely beside the point but like there's rumors of a mass effect trilogy remaster this year that's interesting i've never mm-hmm. played mass effect but if they were oh. if they were remastered i would play it i uh, love mass effect yeah no i've heard so many good things about it. it's a bioware game right so that's mm-hmm. the night it's the old republic people but yeah uh, uh yeah man like what was it, what was that thing that you said before mass effect um that fallen order gave me spark of hope um oh. <laughs> or the game before yeah oh burnout oh yeah they need to make burnout takedown yeah do you remember that game i do paradise was my favorite but uh takedown was also very good was that wasn't that number three it was like burnout three takedown i think so yeah that was my favorite one Mm -hmm. let's put it on record awesome we'll do uh the official joy clicks jedi knight's bible we will update that uh right next to the (laughs) fact that jack martin is alive question mark yeah big question Um, there but speaking of star wars games that have not aged well or and ones we've talked about on the show before um the force unleashed we have some more information for uh the canceled plans for star wars the force unleashed 3 nice so this is this was from uh the god darth maul himself Mm -hmm. sam whitwer Sam Witwer, uh, recently, I believe last week, because of the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back, IGN did a watch from home theater. They've been doing this recently, just sort of uh, having guests on, having people who work for the, the website together to do something around their community in quarantine. Um, so they had Rahu Kohli, who is a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, he was great on the CW's <laughs> iZombie. Um, you, know, you know what's funny about this i think i actually tuned in while this was live oh really <laughs> yeah but i only watched like five minutes of it oh nice uh so they had rahul Kohli there as well as sam Witwer, and sam Witwer, mike as you said uh was the voice of darth maul uh star killer in the force mm-hmm. unleashed games and um they were talking about the force unleashed the force unleashed 3 came up into conversation in some way uh, there's not much to mine out of the conversation, but Sam Witwer was giving a couple nuggets about like where we were going. Um, so he said, quote, The Force Unleashed 1 and 2 games were all about Vader toying with Starkiller. Um, and everything that was happening in those games, the ending of Force Unleashed 2, which ended on a cliffhanger of Vader being captured was all part of a plan and force unleashed three was going to have a giant like intense confrontation between star killer and vader where we would see quote the true extent of vader's power with him proclaiming i am lord lord darth vader dark lord of the sith so wait lord dark vader lord darth vader dark lord of the sith so we were gonna see unhinged vader that's the takeaway i think isn't he unhinged all the time isn't that the point i mean i guess not right because like force unleashed we see star killer be the most powerful jedi to live right true 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 so if we were gonna see vader surpass that that's like dragon ball z levels dude <laughs> <laughs> we need a we need a whatever the star wars equivalent is to uh to dragon ball z yeah like if if what were i mean if star killer is like a super saiyan then vader right. is like super saiyan blue like he's up there you know like so i want to see what lucas arts force unleashed canon darth vader at a hundred percent would have been like yeah that would have been cool do you think that would have been like the climax of that game or do you think that would be something Uh, yeah you think so i i mean i'd assume because like if it is this weird at the time this is their canon thing lucas helped with some of the story stuff starkiller would have to lose right he would have to lose yeah so you would think that the end 
of the game is him giving it his all and then it's just a realization that vader's too powerful and crushes him mercilessly that's so awesome yeah that's like what a way to end uh, <laughs> to end that series especially since vader is like such an integral character to mm-hmm. all that yeah uh, and just have him just absolutely just destroy star killer yeah and honestly kind of in line with some of the topics we've been discussing the past few weeks with uh mm. our retrospective discussion about the force unleashed one and then more recently talking about if star wars should get into more alternate timelines parallel mm-hmm. universes um yes I, I would still really love to see this story explored just like make see what it would be like to have the jedi or vader or like the super powerful force sensitive people to really just be comically powerful you know oh just like are you talking about like only the sith though sorry only the sith he said yeah well like I, I would kind of like to see them ease up on the rules of what the Force can do. That's not how the Force works, you know? Like, right, yeah. have Vader and Starkiller, like, using the Force to hurl asteroids at each other or something like that. Like, yeah, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, right? Because... Yeah. That would remind me of, like... That reminds me of, like, Thanos and in Infinity War. Infinity War. When, he, sure. <laughs> when he, like, uses the gauntlet to, like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... While we will never get the Force Unleashed 3, um, you and I are both hopeful that maybe we can see Sam Witwer take up that secret apprentice role again in some way, but... I think I think maybe. I think it has a chance. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the question. I think it has a chance because of Sam Witwer's connection to the canon Star Wars now. Yeah, which is thanks to his... <laughs> role as star killer funny enough it's all coming full circle you know it really that would really make it come full circle that's for sure yeah because his work as maul is amazing and he helped elevate that character for many people myself included yeah definitely but it would be nice to give him something that he fully owns right because like he shares maul with ray park right i mean yeah ray park which I learned, I think, on the podcast last week, never did the voice. Uh. Which is, you know, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Something I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So, I would like to see what we're continuing Star Wars. I'm sure he will, because he voiced the son in the Dothamir arc. Or not Dothamir, um, Mortis in Clone Wars. Oh, the... Yeah. So what about it? He voiced the son in the Mortis arc. Oh, did he really? Yeah interesting Mm -hmm. so he's been around i think he's voiced the emperor in a couple places as well i don't think in series but in video games um so he's he's got ties he's he's good at his work he's he's there man yeah he is so and uh he's not opposed to being fully scanned in for video games still because he's the lead of days gone that is his face in that game you know what you know what they should do what's up they should uh they should remake that like darth maul game that they canceled mm. the one the one that i talk about all the time yeah <laughs> and uh they should just redo it but like do like have him voice maul that'd be sick that'd be very cool all right disney call me up i'll help you write i'll help you write it we'll make maul awesome uh speaking of writing for star wars mike uh timothy zahn who is one of the most notable writers in star wars he's been going at it since the 90s oh yeah i've read some of his work yeah you were talking to me about the thrawn trilogy recently weren't you i was yeah do you wrap that up yet or did you um i moved on to queen's shadow which i finished actually nice yeah did we talk about that last week no we didn't we can talk about it after this though. okay so um we have news from the star wars book world that thrawn ascendancy uh the new trilogy coming up being written by timothy zahn is going to be starting and releasing its first book a month early this year september 1st um the book one is titled chaos rising Mm -hmm. um it's going to be narrated by mark thompson who i did not check but i assume voices thrawn in rebels i have no idea 
Okay. <laughs> well, Mike, for you as somebody who read the Thrawn trilogy that already exists in the new canon, where are you at with this announcement? Well, so I actually haven't finished the new trilogy. Um, okay. I read the first two books and we'll probably move on to the third sometime soon. Gotcha. Um, but uh, this is awesome because the first book and really the entire Thrawn trilogy takes place you know during the empire mm-hmm. um and so it's going to be interesting to see where he gets his start how he gets his start uh it will flesh out the chiss ascendancy in the canon which is something that was uh fleshed out i think in legends um quite quite drastically so it'll be interesting to to see that side of star wars lore mm-hmm. um what do you what do you know about thrawn so I now know that he's voiced by Mark Thompson in Rebels. <laughs> that is true. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that he served the Republic briefly uh, before the downfall. Um, so he had worked with Anakin. Um, I know that he is a celebrated member of the Empire, despite the Empire really not uh, accepting races other than human in their ranks but he's very well respected in the empire um true and i know he's a villain in rebels and that's really about it i know he's chiss that's really yeah it. yeah so like the whole chiss thing is interesting to me mm-hmm. uh learning more about them in the canon because they yeah. were pretty uh from uh, i don't really know much about them in legends to be honest but mm-hmm. um, i know that they were much more fleshed out do you think that uh, the Chiss and their role in Star Wars could be fleshed out uh, over the next few years the way that we've seen the Mandalorians be fleshed out through Clone Wars and Mandalorian? Um, uh, probably not because no. they're they're pretty like like they're they're known for like being like secluded. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that about them. I just knew that they had the blue skin and red eyes, and Thrawn was the one I could name. Right. Well, they're like in the unknown. They're in the unknown regions, and they're like kind of a myth. Okay. They're like kind of a myth, and like he, he like, is like very high up in their fleet stuff. Hmm. Um. Well, yeah, it's. I don't want to spoil it, but it's interesting hearing that though is interesting because it makes me think that high republic which is going to be half about exploring the unknown regions maybe we do explore more of the chiss and their origins in those books guarantee we see some blue guy with red eyes yeah i don't know if they'll be called the chiss Mm -hmm. but they'll be blue guys with red eyes Mm -hmm. and i'm I'm excited (laughs) i'm excited i i We've been talking about Star Wars books recently, and um, if this one takes, if, if this one's a prequel about Thrawn and setting up his rise to power, which mm-hmm. we see like his prime career years in the books you've been reading, um, I, I honestly, if this book is good, which I'm assuming it will be, I will probably start here for Thrawn. Yeah, why not? And just ride it out and see uh, how he grows. Why not? Why not? Um, I do recommend at least the first two books of the Throne mm-hmm. trilogy. They're good. Um, so you said you finished Queen's Shadow recently. I did finish Queen's Shadow. Mm-hmm. And what uh, what is that one about? So Queen's Shadow is about Padme between uh, episodes one and episodes two. Episode mm-hmm. two, uh, and she it basically starts like when she leaves her second term as queen of naboo Mm -hmm. and it's her about her transition into senator essentially um and she's like 18 years old (laughs) yeah so but like it's about her and like honestly her handmaidens are like huge characters in the book Mm. and they just go through all of like the naboo lore that's pretty cool it is really cool dude it's super cool um not much action lots of political intrigue lots of lots of talk about like various hyperspace lanes Mm -hmm. um and their political and their geopolitical significance which is like not that interesting 
in a universe with lightsabers and the force well so you know even even with that though like you and i when we watched the prequels it was sort of a way to come around on the idea that the inner workings of this galaxy are interesting it's just the execution wasn't fully there no i mean let, let me get this straight let me be clear i really liked it yeah okay like I really enjoyed it. Like I thought it was super freaking interesting mm-hmm. um, because it was really smart. But uh, I could see how people don't like this book. Yeah. Okay. So, two questions, I guess. Um, do we deal with Gungans slash Jar Jar at all? They're and, mentioned. Okay. Uh, and two, do we deal with Sheev or Anakin at all? Um, so for the first question, they're mentioned, the Gungans are mentioned. Mm -hmm. The second question, we, we, yeah, Sheev, Sheev is in it a lot. Ooh, a a, lot, okay. Not like a lot, like he's a, he's like a secondary character. He's like a looming, he's like a looming presence. Like, yeah, as he should be. Like he's a looming presence in Queen Amidala's mind because she's like the new senator to Naboo, you know, like, Mm -hmm. So, like, she, she discusses him a lot. Um, okay. But, yeah, it's it's cool. And Anakin? No. Okay. So, no. so there's no not even an aside of her thinking about Anakin at one point? Do you want me to say whether there is or there is? There is? Okay. <laughs> I was just curious because that's – when you brought up dealing with the transition of leaving being the queen from one to two, it crossed my mind of, like – well, yeah, Anakin says that he thought about her, like, every day. So does she even think of him, like, once in a while between it's one ac- and two? It's actually funny because the only time that she thinks of him, mm-hmm. I-, I can only recall one time in the book that she actively thinks of Anakin. Mm-hmm. And she references him as, like, that little boy on the desert world. Like, she doesn't even say his name. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> very interesting but she does say like she she for some reason she's like very fixated on like his mom huh that is interesting dang that's not really a spoiler i mean i I, it didn't come across to me as any way of being a spoiler but yeah um so yeah exciting things continuing on in the star wars book world i have yet to purchase one but i'm i'm there's one in my cart Oh, yeah, we gotta buy that. We do. Uh, you and I, we talked about this before, uh, about doing the Star Wars book club sort of thing. And I guess we can say, because we agreed on doing one, so we can just say the first book, uh, if you want to get a head start, it is Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. It's like six or seven bucks for the paperback on Amazon. I think it's ten bucks for for the kindle version and it's free if you sign up for audible i think so (laughs) yeah there you go um we will be doing that uh i think deadline is probably either end of june or like first week of july but we will be talking about that book um very soon i think yeah i think we said the end of june yeah so Um, look yep are you gonna buy the paperback version probably since it's the cheapest (laughs) i know it's a difference of three bucks but like I, it would be cool to have on a shelf, you know? Mm-hmm. I own one Star Wars book. I told you this off-air last week because you were, you were impressing me with your reading prowess now that I I own a Legends book. It's Star Wars Revan, and I think I read the first chapter, and I was like, this makes me want to play the video game, and I never bought the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Wait, yeah, you never bought the game? Well, no, I, I own both of them, but I couldn't play them because I didn't have a good pc and then i got a good pc and then i tried kotor 2 not the first one interesting that's an interesting choice that says a lot about you christian right well yeah i heard kotor 2 was darker so i was like hey okay also uh i I remember why i actually played kotor 2 because Mm. the writer of 2 chris avalon was announced to be coming into write some of the stuff with fallen order and i was like okay i want to see what this guy is like for writing star wars um because that was when we still knew like nothing about fallen order yeah right so 
Um, we do have one more little nugget of info about the canon expanding currently. Love it. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge VR is an experience that is being worked on currently by ILM uh, and Oculus, the same people that collaborated on Vader Immortal. They are working together to make a original story that will include multiple styles of gameplay, difficulty settings, and um, it's going to explore stories related to Galaxy's Edge. Because listeners, if you don't know this, because sure, I'm sure Mike knows this, Galaxy's Edge is canon. Yeah. The theme park is canon. The, they, go, the, they go to Bat, they go to Batu in, in the Thrawn Alliance's book. Ooh, really? Yeah. Is Ray there? Is Kylo Ren there walking around? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because the Millennium it, Falcon is just there. It's just there. <laughs> because I don't know how it specifically works, but like if you go to Galaxy's Edge, it's supposed to be that the day you're there is a like a day in the actual Star Wars timeline. So like from my understanding, if I went I was interacting with Ray, if Kylo Ren we did a photo op of him like just slashing at me like that happens on that day if you went on a separate day it's in universe the same day that i went you know what i mean interesting so everything happens on one day i think that's how it works i think they justify it that way of like oh yeah there's an adventure on batu and that's what everything is going on that's why ray's here that's why kylo ren's here because they have some sort of story they tell there through the the cast members and the uh the shops and the book so interesting well i I do want to go to galaxy's edge oh me too but i also don't want to get the coronavirus i don't either so uh, (laughs) so (laughs) i feel like i feel like there's probably a lot of coronavirus at the at disney world probably yeah i i have to be rude but i i think they reopened recently with like very very strict guidelines like i saw a picture i think last week of people waiting in line for something but they were all six feet apart i think they capped off how many people could be waiting in line but um i don't think it was for rides or attractions i think it was for merch but in terms of this uh lucasfilm ilm lab next project for star wars vr uh, obviously you and I haven't played Vader Immortal yet, but uh, what's your take on them doing Galaxy's Edge next? The stories from Galaxy's Edge. Whatever. Like, I, I don't really care. Uh-huh. To be honest. Like, I, I don't have a VR console or whatever you would call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really ever plan on getting one anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of irrelevant to me. But I guess it's cool if you're into it. Yeah, I think VR is incredible. I'm glad I bought a PSVR. Uh, Yeah, it's definitely cool. I haven't used it in like five months, but (laughs) it's it's really cool. And I'm excited for Vader Immortal. I'm definitely going to be playing it when it hits the PSVR later this summer. And everything I've heard about Vader Immortal in terms of the immersion factor sounds Mm -hmm. great, you know? Um... And like the storytelling they do there, the way to make you feel like you're really there in terms of experiencing a story involving Darth Vader sounds super cool, you know? And like ILM is groundbreaking with technology. We talked about that last week too with um, Lucas having ideas for this VR tech to be used in productions like a decade ago. So seeing them flesh out a new era, I guess, between the last jedi and rise of skywalker with the batu stuff again could be cool could be a cool way to sort of contextualize more of what's going on in the galaxy between those two films but um, i'm kind of more interested in the idea that it's multiple gameplay styles you know yeah i mean i i guess i don't really know what that means so I, as far as I know with Vader Immortal, it's just you walking around and occasionally doing stuff with a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder if the this Galaxy's Edge thing could involve blaster fights, lightsaber fights, 
I islanding see. ships, stuff like that. Okay. Um, that would be cool, I guess. <laughs> you know what I want, Mike? What? You know, okay, here's the thing. So we, you know how we were just talking about how Galaxy's Edge, there's the cast members, they all have a role, they're all telling this emergent story? Yes. I want the 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 tales from galaxy's edge vr game to put us in the roles of all these cast members actually in universe okay <laughs> so i want to you want to be have, like you want to be like jeff from like fort lauderdale <laughs> yeah i want i want what i want it to be episodic i want one episode to be like oh you get to watch and instruct all these people on how to build their lightsaber you know this new wave of jedi you get to tell them how to do it and watch them do it yeah um, and if you, you get, get a, if you get a high score on the, in mm-hmm. this game then you get hired <laughs> yeah because how cool would that be right how cool would it be to do that like you could do uh episode two of this vr story would be putting you in the cantina behind the bar as a mixologist mm. i i say this dead serious i want that i want to be able to play a star wars game where i'm tending a bar and in serving drinks in a cantina to aliens and smugglers that sounds incredible but not droids i i would accept droids at my establishment oh well that's good good for you i i, I would love, too i would too i love but r2d2 I, I would i would too i'm just referencing episode four that guy oh i, I know i know yeah <laughs> listen 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 (laughs) hey come on no i know i'm inclusive okay Mm -hmm. Uh, um yeah no but yeah it's interesting because it's sort of unsure about what this could mean i do think there's a lot of potential for any of the ideas we've tossed out there to be the route they take with this but i i think as a follow-up to vader immortal as a vr initiative it is super interesting to me it definitely seems interesting to me i i think vader immortal from what i've heard of it seems pretty good yeah um and i guess i'd have to know more about like what this galaxy's edge thing is like actually and like see it mm-hmm. before i before i re- I, f- I figure out which one i'm more excited about yeah so, one of these days i'll get vr hey uh <laughs> I think the, honestly, so you don't have a PS4, and the PSVR is probably the cheapest thing to have if you have a PlayStation 4, but the cost of getting a PlayStation 4 and a PSVR, I think would be probably around 400 bucks right now, and you can also just drop 400 bucks in the Oculus Quest, which is wireless, you don't need to connect it to a PC, and you can play Vader Immortal on it, so if it ever goes on sale, that's the avenue. I mean, yeah, but that that means I have to drop four hundred bucks in an Oculus. Right, that's why I say when it goes on sale, <laughs> that's yeah. the headset you get. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, um, there is one little last thing to talk about here. Uh, we did talk about earlier this year a brand new Star Wars show that got announced: Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge, hosted by Ahmed Best. Uh, we got a trailer. This looks awesome it does um it reminds me of like legends of the hidden temple absolutely um so so could you for maybe young folk who are under the age of 20 could you explain what legends of the hidden temple is and why this show taking that as its formula is good well legends of the hidden temple was basically like you know a show where well, it was teams of kids right yeah yeah they would they would like compete against one another on various <laughs> obstacle courses yeah essentially um yeah and like challenges mm-hmm. and uh you know um one one team would win and i think this show taking over that formula is genius because it was that 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 formula went further than than just legends of the hidden temple i would say guts is probably adjacent yeah Um, yeah guts guts seemed like the more like teen one you know because legends of the hidden temple had this fun vibe to it because there was a context to it all similar to what this is like 
The whole right. thing was like I think the host was pretending to be some like adventure guide that could talk to spirits, and then the temple had this uh, like carved out face in it that was basically God saying like, "Oh, you failed, or you pass on the next round," like stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think you're right. Seeing Star Wars take up that mantle and having it contextualized as being the the challenges of the Jedi Temple to become a Jedi Master, hosted by Ahmed Best, who is amazing. Great choice for this. That's um, so cool that he gets to do this. Yeah, because now he's two Star Wars characters. He's Jar Jar and this new character, which I can pull the name up on real quick. But It's some weird think name. Of, yeah, what do you think of the trailer? Oh, actually, he'd be three Star Wars characters because he was that guy in the cantina in episode two. Oh, you're right. Yep. And that guy has a name, too, I think. Um, Um, So what do you think of the trailer, though? Do you think it's, like, good vibes? Oh, yeah, man. The trailer, dude, like, this is just awesome. Like, it looks pretty cool. Though it also looks super cheesy, I have to say. Yeah. But, like, that's the fun of it, though, I think. Yeah, I, I would think... Or I, I mean, I would say that if you and I, after this show was done, went back to watch an episode of Hidden Temple, we'd feel the exact same way. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I, I do think it's a, it's a fun initiative. It's again really giving a spotlight to kids in the Star Wars fandom, and yeah, making something super fun with it. And it feels great to see Ahmed Best, who's constantly been very active in the star wars community despite all the trouble and i guess speaking of what we talked about at the top of the episode toxicity that's been thrown at him mm. it's just great to see him back in here and be excited about this and on twitter he was giving like this crazy story about like why he chose purple for his lightsaber and he showed pictures of the lightsaber that they let him make and stuff like that it, it's very cool that's so cool mm-hmm. um, wait so he got to chose purple to cho- choose purple as well yeah, so on his Instagram, he said that uh, the inspiration behind the lightsaber has to do with the balance of peace and justice. I chose purple because of the balance between red and blue kyber crystals. Um, the leather on the hilt is large enough for one hand. I took inspiration from a Filipino martial art that I study called Eskrima uh, for a one-handed style of fighting. Dang. Uh, yeah. Ahmed. That's pretty cool, right? That's awesome, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, he, he deserves it. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, can we talk about the set design? Sure. They're, like, I honestly, as somebody who's watched Big Brother for the past, like, three summers, <laughs> this has the Disney money in it, okay? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Big Brother, their obstacle courses, I know they just have to throw them together like three times a week, but the set design, oh, it's just like flat, simple colors and like tapestries to make you think you're in a forest. Like this definitely has some Disney production design in it, but it's definitely like, it's aware it's a kid's game show, you know, it's not like trying to make it look like a film or anything. No, I think it looks really good. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. Like, it looks mm-hmm. like... Like, the... I watched this thing on the Star Wars show about this guy. He was talking about how he created... Or helped to create the set piece for, like, inside of the ship mm-hmm. on the Jedi Temple Challenge. And, like, they were showing, like, all these close-up shots of, like, the inside of this, like, Jedi ship. And it's, like, really, really cool. Like it's really detailed and like it looks it looks awesome Mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty sweet like again good vibes the first episode comes out tomorrow so i'll at least watch the first one because i am interested to see what kind of challenges they have planned out yeah i'll Um, certainly i'll certainly watch it tomorrow uh interesting though it comes out on youtube but not disney plus i could have sworn this was announced to be a disney plus show I think it was. I don't know why it's now a YouTube show, but I'm like almost certain that it was originally Disney Plus. Yeah, that could have just been misinformation, maybe, or that could have been me assuming when we talked about the announcement of the show originally. So if that was true, my bad. Possibly. But, um, I mean, I think. 
I think but, maybe maybe all of us assumed that. <laughs> well, yeah, right? Because you have this platform now, and there's... As cool as Disney Plus is, and the fact that there's so much content on there, you still want to like be putting original content on there, right? So I would assume that a Disney production like this, directed at a specific demographic of kids, where Mando is kind of not that... Right would be thrown up on that service. Maybe it will be eventually, but it is premiering on youtube.com slash Star Wars Kids or uh, starwarskids.com. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense to me, but hey, I guess you got to trust the mouse. Yeah. So <laughs> um, that kind of brings us to a larger topic I wanted to talk about with you this week. Because uh, as we said earlier, when we were talking about uh, Force Unleashed and um, EA Motors Project Maverick, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is now available for free asterisk if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, which you need to be for online multiplayer. Um, you can now download Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I figured it would be a good time for you and I to talk about why we love that game so much. Star Wars Battlefront 2 holds a special place in my heart because there is so much love put into, like, all of the visuals in that game. Mm -hmm. It's stunning. Yes. It is so beautiful, and, like, the music cues are always, like, like chef's kiss, like, so right, and, like, with the music and the visuals, and it's just such an immersive sort of, like experience mm -hmm. uh for me personally yes it makes me emotional absolutely like i love it i remember when battlefront one came out and i would say about that game 1, blows <laughs> <laughs> I'll, i will give battlefront one the fact that for the first like 30 hours of just multiplayer having a star wars game that looked and sounded that good was enough at that time and yeah but but it got old so fast oh for sure and i will like i'll say dice impressed me with that game where i was like okay when we get their second one i'm sure they'll fix it or i'm sure they'll fix the issues with the game uh and like my main issue being it was kind of starved for content but the respect they have clearly there like they clearly respect this world these characters these planets everything about it and Battlefront 2, I didn't start playing until, like, spring of 2019, when it was on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, funny enough, because I, I bought PSVR the, pr the previous November, and then I was like, I want to play this X-Wing mission, because I, I love Star Wars, but I needed Battlefront 1 still to play that game. So yeah. I was like, damn, that sucks, because I sold it a long time ago um but they had a combo pack of uh, about from one and two for like eight bucks and i was like of course i'll pay that and i get why people were upset at launch you know i wasn't there i think you were at launch i don't think i i didn't get it at launch no okay i got it like maybe a month and a half after oh okay well you were still feeling the the controversy then right oh yeah 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 the dude um i i i honestly like don't really remember it because i just didn't i didn't really like try to think about it because i thought mm -hmm. it was just too toxic mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it was like a bunch of controversy with like the loot boxes and like the star cards and stuff yeah um, so si like i totally get if people saw that in the game were furious with it i remember most of the um outlets i go to for reviews reviewed battlefront 2 mostly negatively like they, they were like yeah it's cool to be in the star wars world but they're it's bogged down by all of this poor game design and microtransaction garbage so they really cleaned up their act though yeah so like if people dropped the game since then i get it but as somebody who started in 2019 mike as somebody who's been playing since a month or two after launch and then seeing it grow in real time I think the game is worth a second shot. Oh, the game is certainly worth a second shot. If you haven't, if you stop playing it because of the controversy and everything, all of that is remedied. Like mm -hmm. it's completely fixed. Like 
I don't really think that game's pay to win. Like, oh no, not at all. Like, you definitely have to grind a bit at first. <laughs> like, oh yeah, but I mean, mm-hmm. like some of my friends, I'm planning on playing with them tonight. Like, they're downloading it right now, and I have a level seventy heavy trooper, which I'm very proud of. Nice, but it, like at first. It was definitely a lot of me getting my teeth kicked in because I did not have good cards, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't have a good build. So, I was just having a fun time running around as a stormtrooper. So, I was like, hey, this is cool. So, I didn't mind that I was dying and not really getting many kills. I was trying to do, like, objective-based stuff mostly. But it's definitely... You need cards. Like, you need cards to have a fighting chance but the only change now is that people can't just buy their way to the best cards. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I don't know, man. Do you play it on PS4? I do. Yeah. On um, your PC? I have it on Correct. Xbox and PC. Nice. Yeah. Just a dual wielding, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Were you going to say something? I was going to say, say, I think that's even more true, though, for Heroes Villains, because, like, Heroes Villains is all about your build for the heroes or villain you're playing. So I I totally think the frustration is much more instant there if you queue up into Heroes Villains and then you just get chopped down to level up pretty much. Yeah, like, I get my I get my butt handed to me all the time playing Heroes Villains. Yeah, like it's seriously heroes villains is rough like maybe now that on the ps4 side at least since so many people will be hopping in brand new true you'll have a bit more of a level playing field i don't know if that will change the meta much but um i i honestly i i think i met my main is kylo ren i got him to level 10 and then i looked up youtube videos on like good builds how to approach saber duels the best way like the community around battlefront 2 i really think has helped that game a ton but because people just start really into playing it and stuff yeah and they really know like i feel like ea has worked with them they've clearly they've talked about i think they called them game changers like they've gone into Uh, talking with fans of their game and saying okay how can we make this better what isn't working for you and they take that into account and i think it's shown because the game is amazingly fun right now the game is so much fun like Mm -hmm. capital supremacy is like so cool Um, that's that is my go-to in that game and that was a free update everything was free yeah (laughs) like Like, everything was yeah like there's there's still some pretty high currency attached to like unlocking a character or getting well, skins for them but well the characters are all unlocked well if you have the celebration edition it is really yes I so don't, i don't think i have the celebration edition but all my characters are unlocked. so that might have changed in an update but when i got it in 2019 i had to unlock obi-wan i remember that oh okay um but yeah, so if you if you do still want like alt skins though, so if you want like Ray with her yellow lightsaber, you still gotta grind to get like ninety thousand credits, I think, which is probably a couple hours across a few nights. Probably, but yeah, yeah, Capital Supremacy, all the DLC they added. There's so much content in this game. Yeah, honestly, if you have the means to play it for free, and you aren't playing it. You're really just doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. Like, it's a sizable download, so... Yeah, but I mean, I, like, you know, you can you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, that <laughs> would be the one hurdle, I think, that could discourage people. Like, it's 115 gigs. I'm not doing that for a game filled with loot boxes, but, like, it, it's all gone. Like, they really have turned the game around. Uh, the Capital Supremacy, like you said, is so much fun. My first match of that, I played for, like, an hour and 15 minutes straight. Cause... Yeah, you could play, like, like five-hour matches of Capital Supremacy. Yeah, because I don't even know, like, if they're on a Mercy timer. But the, the great thing about Capital Supremacy, and I love that they started that mode on Geonosis with Clone Wars stuff. Because yeah. 
playing as the clones in the Republic era is my favorite favorite thing to do in that game. I love playing as the clones out of all the other factions. So I, I really dislike the CIS. Oh, me too, man. It's it, that is like perfectly balanced as all things should be, but like, dang. Yeah. If I load into a match and I'm the droids, I'm pissed. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, but the thing about capital supremacy, I think that's so good, is it really just encompasses so much of what you set it to start us off with this conversation of like dice and ea put so much tlc into crafting a star wars experience that is authentic from the visuals to the sound because it's extended we have a ground war that we're battling out uh ships heroes of the era the two factions facing off you're basically just capturing command posts until you gain enough dominance on the ground to board the enemy ship then you have to find the reactors on the ship and blow them up but if you get your squad wiped out if you have like you have a shared resource a shared number of soldiers and if they the enemy wipes you out you're back on the ground and it's an even playing field again it's just so fun and dynamic and it kind of creates your own star wars battle story in that way and i just love it so much that is, that's very true, that characterization. that you, you really do kind of just, like, end up creating your own battles. And, like, yeah. it's like it's like I'm sitting on the floor of my bedroom with my Star Wars action figures again. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how it kind of feels sometimes. Yeah, and that's what I loved about the original Battlefront 2, right? And while I have so much love for that original game still, I feel like the multiplayer experience I can get out of this Battlefront 2 in the year 2020 with my friends the same friends i played the og game with back in the day nice this one like today i think is the better experience yeah for sure for sure it's it's the best battlefront yeah i think like obviously people have nostalgia and favorites of the old old ones but like like i do too like i i really love the old battlefront 2 i played a lot of it like oh yeah and i played a lot of the old original battlefront as well Mm -hmm. but like battlefront 2 like the new one is just better yeah the only (laughs) thing the only thing that i think would make it better is if in these space battles you could board enemy ships still and like even capital supremacy gave us like a little taste of that with what i just said of like progressing through the match enough to board them but yeah it, whenever battlefront 3 happens that's the only thing they have to add and then i'm perfect did, I'll you, buy just, day did, one. did you just chef's kiss i did chef kiss nice <laughs> uh, you know a funny thing about battlefront 2 also that i just recently tried i don't know if you ever tried this ewok hunt did you ever try that you know i think i tried it like once so i was aware that this was in the game I was aware that there was a, like, Slayer kind of thing in Halo where it's, like, there's one infected and then you have to kill the survivors and then if you kill a survivor, the infected side grows and then it's just trying to wipe it out or trying to outlive, or trying to outlive the timer, I guess. Yeah, it's like the, uh, it's like the Apex Legends Halloween special event. Sure, yeah, that's a good comparison also. Um... So I knew that was in the game, and I was playing it with my friend a couple weeks ago, or just normal Battlefront, and we were kind of tired. I was like, hey, why don't we try this Ewok thing? Like, we've never tried this mode. This modes I still haven't played in the game, because Capital Supremacy is so good. So we, we, yeah. loaded up, we loaded up into Ewok Hunt, and we were terrified. I did not realize it was going to be that tonally different than the rest of the game because I, I remember it's like just a bunch of like i don't know like like i remember sneaking up on stormtroopers that's all i remember so the quote-unquote infected here would be an ewok and you play as a group of stormtroopers you, you can only be first person in this you play as a group of stormtroopers in the woods of end the forest moon of endor at night uh, I believe probably on the day or the day after the Death Star explodes, right? So, like, the Empire is in shambles. 
you're this group of stormtroopers trying to survive and you're in this forest with a, a very dark screen like they crank up the the shadows here so you can barely see you have a flashlight on this your coming blaster. Back to me. This is coming yeah. back to me. Yeah. You have a flashlight on your blaster that will run out, so you have to let that cooldown go before you can pop it again. And you just have to survive. The Ewoks are so much faster than you. You can barely see them because they are life-size Ewoks. They're running around ground level. And if your flashlight's not on, they will sneak up on you. They will kill you. It's terrifying. Yeah, I feel like that's just like super, really, super imbalanced. Like the oh, Ewoks, yeah. yeah, Ewoks just win every time. Yeah, I, I, I think out of like the five or, or so balanced. matches I've played of it, I saw the Stormtroopers win once. But like, the fact that that's in there, the fact that there is such a different game mode that is sort of going for like a horror sort of thing, and it kind of nails it in terms of how underpowered you feel as a survivor. Like some horror games do very well. I think it speaks to the variety of what you can look to in the game. So, yeah, that's a fun little bonus in there. Yeah, that is fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm also, this is the first one of the new ones that had campaign. Um, yes. So not only would you be getting it on the PlayStation store for its multiplayer, but also its campaign, mm. um, which I didn't realize I put, I had never played the, the the older Aiden arc of the campaign. Mm-hmm. This is some breaking news to me. I thought I thought that there were, I didn't know that that existed, mm-hmm. which is pretty funny. As far as I know, that the end of the story came post launch for some reason. Um, so that might be why you missed it. But yeah, it's it's a story that I haven't seen through yet, but sounds interesting to me. I know our friend Jack was very let down by it but um, i think there's potential in exploring what it's like at least in i'm sure there's a couple scenes in there that are really good of like on the empire side on the soldier side what it was like to see the death star blow up you know yeah i mean that like i played the first half of it i guess i don't know how long like the other part of it is but i played that first like at launch whatever that is and yeah that it's it has some really cool moments i have to say Mm -hmm. gotta say so and i don't think it's terribly long right so like you could burn through that in a weekend yeah no yeah you could you could burn through that in like a day if you wanted to yeah okay so if you're if you're interested like if you want to just check out the single player campaign it's there um if you're again it's on playstation if you're real trophies yeah, oh yeah it's gorgeous it's a, it's a stunning game um i i do know that it's a achievable platinum because jack got it very easily jack so you, you can't say that though jack jack like was he played like fallen order for like 36 hours and he platinumed it sure that is a fair statement yeah but battlefront 2 worth a shot if you never played it if you only heard negative things about it i think it's great um they recently did their final content expansion which we did mention briefly on the show recently but there's new skins in there uh ray skywalker yellow lightsabers in there uh clone wars mall as a skin is in there you can play as bb8 (laughs) on the battlefield yeah i tried that Mm -hmm. i wasn't good at it or like what i don't know yeah it's it's a it's a wild game like mike said it's a great way to sort of visualize your own battles like you were when you were a kid with your action figures it's a lot of fun and i think if you have playstation plus if you have a ps4 or even if it's on sale on xbox or pc i highly recommend it same but i think that is going to do it for the episode that is everything in star wars this week like i said uh next week there will probably be more news on project maverick at least maybe rumors on when it's supposed to get announced officially i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make a prediction we're gonna have some mando news oh yeah because we broke our streak this week there was no big mando news no there wasn't i was like upset about that Mm. i know there's still the uh disney gallery series but i haven't had a chance to watch the new episode and i don't 
I haven't seen any big headlines out of it. No, so. I haven't seen much either. So, mm-hmm. well, uh, Mike, if you would like to shout anything out, where yeah, can you can people find you. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike P Connors. Very nice. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Chris N Buckley. Um, we have this show available for you on YouTube, youtubecom joyclicks If you're watching our faces, audio services, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, is where you can go to listen to us only in your ears only in the well, ears <laughs> that's my favorite way to listen to podcasts <laughs> only in um, the ears baby uh and for the rest of the stuff for the rest of the plugs we plug the show every week so look to local areas where you can donate to the causes that are going on right now because that's very important uh get educated research who at least like your representatives are in the state see what they see what they're about yeah <laughs> and uh just spread spread the love spread the positivity be better to each other and um read the news until, yeah read the news <laughs> <laughs> but uh until next time we're fine everything's fine how are you may the force be with you general kenobi <laughs>